just saying before we started, it's been way too long. And I just said, no, screw this. I got to start the recording because I don't want to lose these great <laughs> moments, man. How <laughs> are you, brother? Man, uh, well, first of all, you look exactly the same. We, we ah. must have run into each other years ago. I don't even know the event. but No, I know, I I know what the event on. was. I know what the event was. It was the the charity event that you were hosting. It was the was children the Starlight, the Starlight, Starlight. Gala. The that Starlight was the Gala. last time I right. saw I you. Say, the Starlight Gala, and that was before COVID, right? Right, Rudy? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, yeah. Just, did, we, we just did another one of those uh, uh, a Starlight Gala uh, fundraiser a few weeks ago, um, and that was the first in four years. So, man, I missed you. Missed you too, brother. I am yeah, so. I love, your, I love your backdrop today. That's the yeah. old Much Music logo. I love that one. That's the one I fell in love with right there. Same here. I actually bought, and I think I still have it in my parents' place. I yeah. bought the T-shirt Yes, from Hudson Bay. We're selling it. It was at the back, and it just <laughs> had the logo. I wore the hell out of it, man. And Oh, good for you, man. Well, and that's what hey, we're listen. talking about. We're going to get to that. Before, though, you said, parents, how's your mom doing, man? I haven't seen you or your mom in so long. Please tell her I say hi. and uh, Definitely will. Mom's yeah, doing man. well. Mom's you guys doing are the well. best. And, and how, are the, how are the kids, man? Because I know you took one of them down to the World Cup soccer or something like that. I did. I took Noah, who's 18 now, and he's towering over me, which isn't hard to do. Uh, you know, I'm only five, <laughs> seven and a half. But no, Noah's great. He started uh, college uh, this, well, a couple of weeks ago. He's learning to become a training to become a firefighter. Wow. And, uh, and I got two other little guys. Uh, so I got three boys, you know, my three sons. They're all doing great. Angie's doing great. And uh, no, man, we're, we're as busy as ever. Uh, how, do they, how, do they, how do they handle your fame? Oh, they, they, I'm just dad to them. I, I'm, I'm no... I'm no famous person <laughs> and i don't think I'm, I'm a famous person in my mind either i i had a great gig uh i had a great few gigs there for a while and uh you know it, it was it was a dream gig obviously the one at much music um but they my younger guys you know i'm just dad i just like where are the pancakes give me more syrup <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> I love that, man. And you are right. See, that's one of the reasons why you've lasted in this industry. And I try to tell the younger oh. folks, the most important thing is knowing that it's it's a job. It's a very special job, but it's a job. It doesn't define who you are. You've never no. done that. You've defined yourself as you, not oh. as the job. Oh, thank you, Rude. I appreciate that. It, it was a It was a dream job and it was a gig that many young Canadians wanted. I was so fortunate to win the contest that, you know, got my foot in the door of this magical world of television, um, music television. And, and I, I was one of the lucky ones. But like I said, as a viewer, when I back in the 80s, when much just started with that logo, um, it was a dream. It was a dream to get there. And, and I just I stuck to, to the dream, the vision. I entered contest after contest. And, and it just happened to work out for me, but it was a gig. It was a job. Um, there were we, VJs that that had that position, uh, but I never took anything for granted when I had that position. I knew it could come to an end, like any job, any day. Uh, and I, I just, I just praised and I, I, I loved each and every day because every day was different, as you know. You were down there many times. Um, there were bands coming into much music, into the environment every day. And that was the beauty of it. If you were a music fan, this was your music heaven. Like, like we got to interview all the, the biggest stars, all the musicians. And uh, listen, man, I never took one minute of that job for granted. Being a much music VJ for nine years, being in the building at 299 Queen Street West for 11 years. It was uh, some of the best years of my life. Let's talk about that, man. One second here. Somebody's trying to call me. And uh, <laughs> in the middle of our, that's always happens. There's a reason hey, why the logo. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> there's a reason why we got the logo. There's a reason why you and I are talking to, because there's a very special documentary that's going to be shown. What is that documentary and what's it about? It, it, you know, it brought tons of goosebumps. To, to my whole body when I saw it down in Austin for uh, at South by Southwest 
299 Queen Street West is the much music documentary that uh, tells the story um, all the way back when it was just an idea in Moses's mind and John Martin's mind. Um, uh, the new music had been around with Jeannie Becker and JD Roberts. And then comes this 24 hour music station in, in the US, which we all know to be MTV. Well, they wanted their own, can, can, they wanted Canada uh to have something similar and this whole idea was the brainchild of john martin and moses nimer and it and it uh and it just came to be in in the mid 90s well sorry 80s i i got there in the 90s uh 1984 um which when it was launched so so sean Menard, the director of the documentary goes back to those early days and shows us all how it all started how it all began i know there are a lot of us that are are not familiar with how it all began for much music we were just there in the heyday but um he takes us right back to the very beginning all the way up until the very end i was questioning myself the other day i'm going wait wait a minute much music isn't still on television is it i know it's a, it's big on tiktok right now and social mm -hmm. media but but i don't even know wh what happened i was long gone by the time it all went downhill um i was at et canada at the time but i knew in, in in those 10 years that i was there 11 years i guess uh from 94 to 2005 some of the best times uh, of my life and and just a little bit of that is is documented in sean's film um and that just goes to show you how many amazing moments were were archived and 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 sean had them all digitized so he can show them uh to everybody uh in in this beautiful documentary you know there, here's the thing that i want people to understand the difference between much music and mtv i have never been a fan of mtv and the reason why is because and everybody knows this now even though they try to trickle around it mtv did not play black artists for the longest time until they were forced to by the oh. record companies because uh, when Michael Jackson had Thriller and they wouldn't play it, Sony said, well, if you don't play Michael, you're not playing any of our videos. Same thing happened with Prince. You're not playing Prince. We're going to pull all our videos. And they were forced to play the videos. When it came to much well, music, there was never a problem. They played everything and everybody. We played everybody, every genre, and that's what I think made Much Music so special. Going back now to that story that you just told me, I had no idea, Rudy, but now it's making more and more sense as we just witnessed the MTV VMAs coming to an end, the 39th annual. Um, well, that first one back in 1984, Michael Jackson's Thriller didn't win for best video of the year. It was the Cars, and no disrespect to Rick Ocasek and the Cars, mm -hmm. but... Um, the Cars video uh, for, I think you might think, won yeah. over Mike Jackson's thriller. And it all makes sense now from that story that you just told me. I didn't know that. I didn't know. And 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 I, I didn't even, that didn't even cross my mind when it came to much music because I was, I was, I tuned in religiously as a teenager <laughs> to much. And we'd see all the artists. We'd see the white artists. We'd see the black artists. We'd see all genres. They, much music played everything that we as viewers, as fans of music wanted to see. There was no restrictions. Um, Speak, I, I didn't and, that and speaking of Thriller, do you remember when everybody rushed home to watch much, much music when they were going to debut the Thriller video? I totally remember. I told her I was one of those kids that rushed home. I even, I even the next day or the next week at school, got all my friends to <laughs> act out the parts in the thriller video of course i was michael jackson <laughs> dude i'll never forget moments like that those those shaped us as music lovers you know and for yourself though as a as a much music vj a veteran you were something special and the reason why i say oh. that is because technically you should not have made it as you said you were shorter you had a squeaky voice, you had the baby face look, and you've got guys like J.D. Roberts and Michael Williams, oh. and, you know, like you had all the these legend. people had this, yeah, this legend, legendary look, legendary voice, legendary uh, approach, 
And then yeah. here you are, no Rick doubt. the Temp, and then <laughs> you just kill it when you what? finally get your opportunity. What was it about your drive and your work ethic that got you to the position where you were, where after you left, you ended up on ET Canada? Rudy, first of all, you're too kind, man. You're so sweet. Thank you for the nice words. Um, what was it? I, I, I just loved music, man. I had my thumb on the pulse of what was going on in the world of music when I was a teenager. I knew everything about everyone. Not so much these days, but back then I did. And I think <laughs> I think I just ran with that. I ran with it. When I got my foot in the door after winning the Temp Contest in 1994, I wanted to prove to the much music brass that I was able and capable and 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 had the knowledge like Steve before me and Erica before me and Master T and Michael Williams and Christopher Ward and JD Roberts and that list goes on and on cuz those and Don't forget Bill pioneers. Willishka. Don't forget and Bill. Bill and of course Bill. Of course Bill. But those were the pioneers in my mind. I just loved what they were doing and I just I just on a daily basis, tried to get to that level of of their uh, expertise and professionalism. And, and you're right; they were the legends. And then this kid, punk kid from Hamilton, comes <laughs> along. But I, I don't know, man. I I uh, I always loved interacting with the viewers. I I always felt it was imperative to make that connection with the viewers. I think because I wasn't. The, the J.D. Roberts or the Steve Anthony, the, the untouchables, let's just say. Because yeah, those yeah. guys, come on, and Erica, and, and they, they were untouchable. Come on, they were like, they were ahead of their time. Denise Donlin, we can't forget Denise Donlin. And of course, Denise Donlin, who hired me back in 1996 to become a VJ. But you're right, all those names, there's so many of great, those great names. I think I was more of like uh, a hands-on you know, fan of music, viewer, more of a viewer. I got along, you know, and I, you know, I could, I could be a viewer's best friend. Um, but I think that's why I fit in to that uh, segment of what I was doing at that time in the mid nineties. Um, I don't know, man. That's a great question. Maybe you'll have to ask Denise or Dave <laughs> Hines or, or, or you know, Moses at the time, the people that hired me, because obviously they saw something in me. God bless them, and 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 I'm so grateful for that opportunity, and I just ran with it. David Kinds, uh, you know, brilliant, brilliant mind uh, uh, behind much music. Um, but one of the things one. that um, you and I have been in this business for so long, so um, I, you I probably think you get a lot this... longer, Rudy. You a lot uh, longer, but you still look amazing. Uh, you too, my friend. <laughs> you and I both know that doing these interviews, especially when they're live, it's not easy. So yeah. what would you say off the top of your head, because there are probably so many, what was the most fun interview that you had? And what was the most difficult? Because as we know, you never know what's going on with these artists or stars yeah. that day. And they could be in the most miserable mood. And no matter what you do, they'll sit there and look oh, yeah. at you or whatever good question you have. They want to just tear you the pieces. They do, and they want to, they'll just give you the one-word answers. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, we've had our share of those. I think the most fun I ever had, and I never pictured this, I never saw this coming, because I'm an alt-rock guy. I like I like that genre. That's my go-to genre, the Chili Peppers, Stone Temple Pilots, Pearl Jam, uh, you know, Nirvana back in the day. But I had a lot of fun with those boy bands. I really did, and I know you did as well. <laughs> but there's something about that. We had tons of fun with Instinct. We had tons of fun with the Backstreet Boys. We had tons of fun with 98 Degrees, with Soul Decision, and and there was a lot of boy bands in the late yeah. 90s. It was an explosion of them. Um, some of my, my 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 most fun interviews were with those guys because we talked to them so much. We knew each other. We knew where each other was going. We we could we could pick fun. We can have a little fun at their expense with those types of uh, bands. So so definitely those guys. And then of course the, all the other bubblegum pop queens mm -hmm. out there, Christinas and the Britneys and the Jessicas, uh, Simpsons. So I had a lot of fun with that genre. Um, I was I was sort of pigeonholed into that genre. <laughs> um, you know, not 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 forced, but it always, you know, whenever, whenever they came to town, it was like, okay, well, let's get Rick to do them. 
Um, and it was great. It was great fun. I, I loved every minute of those interviews. Now, now going back to your the second part of your question, the most yeah. difficult, the most difficult ones I would say were when those Britpop bands came into town because those mm. Britpop bands are too cool for school. You know it. Yeah. I know it. Yeah. The viewers knew it. The fans of their music knew it. So the Oasis is the the Blurs. Oh. Uh, you know, oh. the gorillas. <laughs> Remind me to ever tell you a story or... about the, the blur. Oh yeah. I want to hear it. I, I probably heard it before, but I know exactly where you're going. Oh my goodness. Top blur. Nails, right? You're absolutely right with blur. Blur was a nightmare to interview. I remember, I can't remember which member it was, but he was bombed well, out of his head. Damon and probably. probably drunk out of his head. Every time I asked a question, he he kept diverting it to he wanted me to take him to the Eaton Center to buy carpets <laughs> that he claims his aunt lives in Mississauga and he wanted us to go and bring it. So I was willing to do it. Oh, cool the PR that. person's yeah. going, don't you dare leave. Don't you dare leave. <laughs> Another member comes in and he's just like, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no. Strange. Very bizarre. So I had the interview and yeah. I've never aired it. But oh, no. You got to air it. I never aired it. But later on, I did another interview with them. I played it for them. And they're just like, oh, we're so sorry. We're so... <laughs> they had sobered up at that point. Uh, yeah, exactly. We apologize for, for everything we've said. But you, you you never knew what to expect with those those bands. And, and, and you you didn't get much in return. The best interview I ever had with, with a Britpop band was uh, Noel Gallagher. Uh, from Oasis. It was in Rock and Rio. He had just got off his flight from London to Rio de Janeiro, where the Rock and Rio Festival was. He was a little into the sauce, so he was very talkative at this point. And he's talking about all the genres that were at this Rock and Rio. It's Rock and Rio, but we have Britney Spears and we have NSYNC here. Um, but he just kept going on and on and on about that. But uh, yeah, no, some great interviews. And 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 I, we started this by saying the most difficult, but Every time I had the opportunity to interview a band was a great day. Yeah. You know, I, it was a pinch me moment, right? Like I'm a fan of music and now I get to talk to Aerosmith. I get to talk to Green Day. I get to talk to Destiny's Child. You know, we were we were blessed, man. We were blessed. And then getting to hang out afterwards or they might call you up and say, hey, we're going to be in town, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like. Those are the cool things. What are what about some of the trips that you took as a much music uh, vid, VJ? That must have been memorable for you too. Well, some of my favorite ones were, well, I, I go number one were the World Music Awards. The World Music Awards opened up my eyes to Monaco, Monte Carlo, and 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 the lifestyles of the rich and famous living over there. <laughs> um, but I had some great times over there and some great stories. I remember so much, even being in the same room with Michael Jackson as he's making his way through a lobby wow. and, and the scrums that would take place when Michael Jackson entered a room, it was unbelievable. But all the other bands that were there from around the world because it was a, it was a world music festival. So those were some good times doing the world music awards. And, 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 and I did my first one with Bill Wilichka, who you mentioned earlier, because Bill would do them all the time. And Bill took me under his wing and and when Bill was on his way out, I continued to do those assignments and just so honored and, and, and excited to, to do the World Music Awards. And then when I was at ET Canada, I, I still went down to do the World Music Awards. They had changed uh, locations. I think they did a couple in London, England, um, mm -hmm. where I actually got to see Michael Jackson perform that year, which wow. was so, so cool. But I think whenever i get that question that's the top of the list but but doing the snow jobs doing, doing <laughs> and jobs i love those gigs too because we're bringing all these bands up to, onto a ski hill we're having fun snowboarding we're, we're you know we're doing the après ski thing but we're getting to listen to these bands that, you know live in concert on a ski hill with all the, the the viewers and fans of the bands around us so no we were we were pretty fortunate back then i still remember my first big trip was with Denise Donlan, who you mentioned earlier, director of music programming. Now she ended up doing the interview because she was still doing interviews at the time. Yeah. And this was 96, my first year. And it was with the Fugees in in uh -huh. uh, in New Zealand. 
uh, in Auckland, New Zealand. Um, so that was that was a memorable trip as well because you never forget your first, and that was like halfway around the world. So no, some cool times, man. I I cherish every minute of every moment spent in front of a camera at Much Music, whether it was traveling on a trip or in the environment doing, you know, regular video flow. It was all so special. Yeah, let's talk about two other things, too. Uh, one of them, of course, is the Much Music Video Awards. Um, yeah. You know, people people remember, and, and just so folks know, I was lucky enough, I covered 25 uh, MMVAs in a row. 25? So you were 25. covering when they were the cmvas the canadian yes. music Network yeah back in yeah 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 Network. way back yeah. then wow. so um i got a chance to watch it grow people remember it as this massive big you know thing out at queen and john where people would pile yeah. up in the street i yeah. remember it as more of the inside where you could walk around and yeah. you can bump into uh, yeah. this person and bump into that person and do and easily just so, do an interview. Talk a little bit about that because that's something no, folks never really got to see on yes. the inside back then. Yeah, you're right, Rudy. That they, they I think they stopped that after a while. Um, yeah. or did I don't know. I left in two. No, they did. They did. They did stop it. Unfortunately, yeah. something must have happened, but you're right. Back in the day, and I'm remembering my first MMVAs. Well, I was a Wrangler for Sarah McLaughlin when, in 95 when I was behind the scenes still. And it was such a special show because you're I'm bumping into the guys in Our Lady Peace and Bass is Bass and I'm, I'm wrangling Sarah McLaughlin. Now, back then it was more Canadian artists and I still remember my first year co-hosting because all the VJs co-hosted this show. Um, mm -hmm. I remember chatting with Alanis Morissette and Getty Lee was there in 96, uh, a bunch of other big Canadian bands at the time. As the and 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 just regular folk, you know, were walking through the environment. You know, someone was sitting at my desk half the time. Someone's, you know, you it needs to make a phone call, so they're using Bill's or Master T's phone from their desk. But it was the living movie, which uh, Moses uh, deemed it. He titled it that. And anything always, things were going to happen. Uh, is yeah. in it, you know, when the cameras were rolling, that's that, th those are the most exciting times, obviously, the behind the scenes stuff. So, yeah, I remember, you know, people just walking through the environment when when a band was playing or, you know, you know, when we're giving away a, a, an award, people were crowding in around us and they wanted to be part of it. Um, and then, it, you know, you saw it started changing when, when it became more international and you started bringing in the biggest bands at the time. You know, David Bowie performed at that show. Britney yeah. Spears, Destiny's yeah. Child, Smashing Pumpkins. Uh, the list, that list goes on and on. I think when they started bringing those, those A-list, I guess you can say A-list acts in, um, the, the, the regular Joe making their yeah. way around the environment, you, you, you didn't see that as much. Or you probably saw more security and it just wasn't the same. But you're right, back when it first started as a CMVAs, and I wanted to be there too, because I was a viewer. I was, uh, I, was, I was watching it from home in Hamilton. Um, it was just like a big, uh, a big indie party. Like, yeah. you know, you know you just, all these friends, all these music lovers are there to celebrate Canadian music. Um, and that must have been a special, I want to ask oh, you yeah. about those early days man forget about you asking me <laughs> no it was it was a blast it was a blast yeah. the thing that i always loved was you like i literally it'd be crowded you're walking this way and then somebody's walking this way you're like hey how's it going and you're literally yeah. doing the interview as you're walking through the crowd right. i can remember right. i can remember once um snow i remember snow and things weren't going great for snow he was sitting in a corner everybody was ignoring him so i said i'm going to go up there and do an interview with him so i did yeah. the interview with him the following year it was a big comeback for him and i remember okay. him walking down the red carpet he bean lined over to me he said i never forgot when you oh. talked to me when nobody else would and those are the things you always yeah. have to remember oh, too <laughs> yeah the other yeah. thing that was amazing intimate and interactive oh. i remember when it was just like the tea party or Our Lady Peace, and then suddenly yeah. it yeah. was Madonna. It was yeah. um uh uh hold on Madonna. It was Janet Jackson, and of course I think yeah. the biggest one was the Spice Girls. Spice Girls. Oh yeah, you're right. That show just blew up. 
And that show was such a special flagship show for Much Music because unlike the MMVAs where the people are there wandering around, well, now the fans of these artists are there getting to interact with Janet Jackson, getting to interact with Madonna and interact with the Spice Girls by asking them questions, by being right there, feet away from their performances. Those were very special shows. And I was talking to someone about this yesterday. They thought they were they were more frequent, but they weren't that frequent, those no. shows. Maybe three or four every year, but they started going for the biggest acts in the world and they were landing them. Much music, they landed those big acts because people, artists, musicians, there was something about much music over MTV that they really had a strong connection with. Uh, you know, I, I don't know whether it was, I can't explain it. I think Sh Sean goes on to explain it in the doc, the, the, the perceptions between MTV and much music. But I think artists really loved coming up to Canada, loved coming oh, yeah. up to Toronto, um, yes. hanging out with us Canadians. And, um, and we were street front, you know, street front. So, so, People were always gathered around. I know down at MTV, so I've been there several times too. It's on the second floor in Times Square. It's not as accessible. You know, you're looking up, but do you really see anything that's happening in those studios? No. Well, on Queen, on John, you were right there. You know, and most of the times we were open up, opening up those windows. That's uh, what I want to get into. And thank you. That that was literally yeah, my yeah. next question. Oh, man. What was it like to have those windows open and having, whether it be a recording artist or a famous yeah. actor or a film uh, franchise yeah. that was going to be hanging out and it opened and then those guys would go out, autographs and even I, jump into the crowd. What was that like, man? That was so cool because that wasn't happening anywhere else in the world. Not, not that I remember. Maybe it was, but not like the way no. much music was doing it. It was so cool, man. It was like, it was the hangout that everyone wanted to be part of at 299 Queen Street West. It was like the hottest ticketed town every day because you never know who is showing up. Of course, we would promote the artists coming in, but that was the cool thing about Much. I remember one day the Stone Temple Pilots and the Chili Peppers came in on the same day, one earlier in the afternoon with Scott and the guys, and then Anthony and the guys later in the afternoon. And the windows were always open. I remember we sent some guy out to pick up a pizza live on air for Anthony and Flea. And I don't know if you remember yeah, that. I remember that one. Like anything, we, we, we got away with anything that we wanted to do <laughs> back in the day. And I think not just the Much Music executives loved it, but I think the viewers, the people that were watching loved it and they wanted more. And, 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 and to have it all happening on this corner in downtown Toronto, well, it just made it the go-to spot for anyone that was coming to visit Toronto, uh, the locals that were hanging out. We'd see regulars all the time in Much On Demand or Electric Circus. They were always coming down to be part of it. And we we loved that. We loved when people came down because, because if it wasn't for the people, the Much Music wouldn't have been as successful. It was the people. It was the music lovers. It was th those you know, souls that that really made much music. Um, can you imagine, you know, being out in the parking lot and there being no one there to cheer on the Smashing Pumpkins or the Bare Naked Ladies? The people came down in droves, man. And it was it was such a special, such magical time as well. Absolutely. Do you miss it, man? Because I know I miss uh, it. And when I say I miss it, like, I wasn't thrilled with the way the MMVAs ended up changing towards the end. Because it was, you know, press conference and, oh, you know, I don't that know. kind I of thing. I wasn't invited, Rudy. I don't know how it ended. <laughs> you know, I wasn't happy. I missed what we just talked about. We experienced when that. I was going to the Intimate and Interactives when nobody, like, I was the only press at the Intimate and Interactives for the longest time until Madonna showed up. But before that, I was the only one there. MMVAs, I was there as the only press for the longest time before it started growing. So yeah, I yeah. miss those raw days. Do you miss it? I do, man. It was it was guerrilla style. It was raw, like you said. We were we were flying off the seat of our pants, a lot of ad living, a lot of off the cuff, because it wasn't scripted. We were just going with the flow of things. We knew our music, all the VJs, and we were just going along with what we thought was entertaining. But it was a simpler time back then, you know, no yeah. device in everyone's hands. I love watching the old footage 
and there's 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 this environment packed with music fans and no cell phones. I love seeing that footage, and yeah. you're gonna see a lot of that in this documentary. There's no cell phones. Everyone's just engaged in in, in what's going on, and it's 100 the best ever. Um, but yeah, I do I do miss it, man. I I, I go walk I walk by 299 uh, every now and then. It's like oh man, what what this was an institution. It was an yeah. institution. Um, and we all we all were in love with it, uh, whether we were part of it inside or on the outside looking in, you know, and and I played both those roles. But uh, it, it was a special place and nothing will ever replicate that for me anyway. Well, just so you know, man, last night I saw Bill for a couple of minutes, Bill Walishka, because yeah. yeah. uh, he wanted me to get he wanted to give me his book. And I know he was oh. doing a bunch of interviews. So we had a chance to talk. He can't wait to see you. Um, I see him. I saw him on your. Uh, you did a. You did a piece yeah. with him recently, talking about his book. And Bill. Bill was one of the funnest, funnest, fun, the best guys to work with because he was like me. We just wanted to have as much fun, and 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 co continuous laughter uh, with Bill. And Bill, he obviously the guy knew his music, and he's so good behind the scenes as well as an yeah. editor, as a producer. Well, he started in the late late 80s and he went on air in the early 90s but bill and i can't wait to read his book i know you've read it already but uh i, I I'm, I'm dying to read his book and and see him and see all the other former vjs that will be in toronto or uh, going across canada on the tour it's going to be it's going to be a fun reunion that's for sure it definitely is and i as i told him and i'm going to say this on camera i actually really wanted to be a much music vj yeah <laughs> I just did not have that camera talent. It took a long time before yeah. I could do it. Some guys, oh. it's quicker. It took me a long oh. time, but I always wish. So the fact that for me, I was able to document over oh, the cool. years, yeah. everything going on. I feel like I've always been part of the family. And, and Rudy, and listen, man, you're such a talented guy. You got to experience even more than the VJs did because you've been a part of it since it well close to day one you, yeah. you've been at 25 mmbas you know once you're done being a vj you get kicked out of that building and you don't get it back. <laughs> so, so you my friend I, i've been there technically longer than i have or longer than steve has longer than <laughs> erica uh because you've been continuously invited back um but no man i think everybody and their dog wanted to be a vj if you were a young canadian growing up watching and a fan of music well you wanted to be part of that magical platform of much music because it because it was it was it was the thing back then like like yeah. it was it was pop culture back then and it was like the go-to place as a young canadian so yeah i i'm sure thousands and thousands uh of us wanted to be vj uh, VJ, unfortunately, well, they can only hire so many. But but man, you would have been so good. I you wish. Have, I, want to, I want to see your audition tape. Oh, you don't want to see it. It was bad. It was bad. <laughs> Look, as we wrap this up, because we've only got a couple of more minutes. We only yeah, have yeah, yeah. Okay. a few more minutes before they cut us off here. Um, and I know this was Bye, Steve. Ant no, 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 no. We're just recording. No. We're recording. Gotcha. But yeah. Steve, Steve Anthony. It was this was Steve Anthony's thing. But did you ever? throw your Christmas tree off the roof of your house oh <laughs> like, like they did back at much where it was after <laughs> Christmas, they would throw the Christmas. Who does that? Throws God. the Christmas tree <laughs> off the building well, and explode. <laughs> you're going to be seeing that in the documentary because Sean dedicates a portion of the movie to the Christmas tree toss. That he <laughs> And Mike, God bless Mike the Cleaner. May he rest in peace up there, Mike the Cleaner. Uh, it was their idea. They thought, okay, we got to get rid of this thing somehow. So yeah, it was so bizarre when you first started watching it, but I grew into it. And I I was fortunate enough to take over. And you know, when Steve <laughs> left, well, I got to do it. And it was, it was such an honor <laughs> to chuck that tree off that roof. But would I ever do that at my own house? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh man! They turned that into a big production over the years too, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it was the big build up, and then they did it. So, brother, I got to tell you, man. Yeah. We would call in musicians to play the national anthem. <laughs> I think, no more from Triumph. I forget it was. Good man, time. This—that's the beauty of much music, man. We did what we felt was right. 
uh, you know, I would I would watch Steve Anthony religiously, you know, growing up because I just thought he was so entertaining. I was, was in it for the video, but then after after a while, it's like I want to see what these VJs are up to because they're so entertaining and they're so cool, and I want to be one. <laughs> Yeah, and you were, man, and you were one of uh, the best. Brother, no. thank you so much, not just for this interview. Thank you for the great memories. I mean, honestly, you and I could probably go on for the next six, seven, eight hours. But <laughs> we uh, people are going to get off, off camera. camera. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But you know what, man? We'll talk at the after party. Congratulations yeah, on being part of this great documentary. And thank God somebody did this because it needed to be done. And I can't wait to actually finally see it too. And I'm looking forward to it, man. Thank you so much for the interview. Thank you, Rudy. I'll see you on the 22nd.